It's, a, it's afternoon, right? I'm not ready to watch. But it's afternoon. It's like one o'clock. Shut the door. Hey, my man. What's going on? We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this um, crack for you. And um, you have today a um, an array of poets and dignitaries honoring and celebrating you as the Illinois Poet Laureate. Can y'all please clap for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been in several drive-bys to make it happen. <laughs> Um, so, about a week ago, I was talking to Mama Angela about a couple of things, a couple questions to ask her. Um, about the youth poet, what poem Crystal was going to read, and is it okay to give Chicago and Mandy's festival your number? <laughs> I just grew up and post call people and I ask them if it's cool to give out your information. But, we were talking and about what I would believe to be 1955. You as a four-year-old person encountering Coco Taylor for the first time. This is what this is about.
picking up a pie for my sister at this place where the line <laughs> was like around three different blocks. And I was like, we're not having a pie. <laughs> we're not having a pie. I'm going to go over here to Jewel. <laughs> and I'll just, just write the name on the, on the box. That's exactly what I did. I wrote the name on the box. But anyway, I called you. And I was like, congratulations, you're so deserving. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can cry. <laughs> they did <better> it, <add> bitch you. <laughs> they better oh, Whatever, because I don't know if y'all understand the like, whole process. You gotta like, write a letter, which I did, and I, I wrote a letter. So a bunch of other folks wrote some letters. Then you sent a letter in, and I was like, my pants are. I'm gonna nominate you for the Poet Laureate. Now, when they hit you up, I need you to send your poems and stuff to them. She was like, okay. <laughs> Here we go. And so I was like, oh, we, mama, we gotta throw you a party. Remember I said that? And she was like, I know, but it's COVID. <laughs> and I was like, shut the door. It is. Mama, we gonna throw you a party. Like what I said, didn't I say that to you, Mom? I said, we don't know you, but. And then I called Pranisha. I called Pranisha Jones, who's like the editor over at the North. Um, I was about to mess up my, my own press company. <laughs> 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 no question. I got you. I don't know I'm saying no Easter, but it, 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 ain't, it ain't the East, it's the West. It's the West. Northwestern. Let's hurry. Yes, I got you. I got you, Parnisha. I was about to mess that up real quick. I said, Parnisha, hey, we got to throw mama party. And you should have heard it when I said, let's throw your party. You should have heard, like, but we get COVID. It was such a disappointment. But I'm like, we shouldn't let this moment happen in history or her story and not, like, acknowledge it properly. So Parnisha, like, whatever you want to do, you know you're my mama's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, that's where I go. Anyway, I 
called my niece and we got on the phone with Poetry Foundation. Poetry Foundation was like, cool. My niece said, hey, let me holler at Allison from Chicago Humanities Festival. I said, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to hear that. <laughs> it was like how it worked out. It was like how it worked out. So again, tonight or this afternoon, there are going to be about a handful of poets who are going to read um, works, explain to you a little bit about how much you mean to them and how much your work has influenced them in their lives. If I had a thousand tongues and each tongue had an echo, I couldn't tell you how much you've influenced and just poured it into my life. Um, I will believe it's my second or third year in Kyle Connor. You're my workshop leader, you're my workshop leader. I'm bringing all kind of things that I'm trying to call poems. Into the, into the workshops. And the day you were the facilitator, you wrote just a real simple note on one of the copies saying, you have such a handle on your language. Because me there, I don't know, I know I'm nerdy like that, but you told that from a person who has such a handle on hers is everything. So thank you, Mom. Um, I, ho I hope they get out here and do you justice. <laughs> if they don't, I'm in the back. <laughs> All right, y'all. Our first poet that's going to do Mama Justice is a poet by the name of Tiff B. Give it up for Tiff B, you all. Empty Parlor Blues by Angela Jackson. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Been so long without you, I think I'm about to die. Love is like that, it's either me or you. I said love is like that, it's either me or you. You think it's me, baby. You're the one who's through. I was the one that made the bed to lie and to crawl inside. I said, I was the one that made the bed to lie inside. Now look at me, I'm caught. Nowhere to run or hide. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Been so long without you, I think I'm about to die. Wish I could, but you know I can't cut you loose. Wish I could, but you know I can't cut you loose. I thought I had you, sugar. I was making my own noose. Come into, the, come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. I'm so hungry for your loving baby. I'm about to die. Thank you. And the poet we welcome now on stage, R.L. Watson. This is Angel by Angela Jackson, and it is for Jerry Ward. I am the only one here. I stand in my one place, and I can see a good piece down the road. I am yonder, further than the chunk of your stone. Right now, directly, I am persimmon falling free and the prisoner opening up in me. Don't come through my door and want to run my house. 
I am the angel who sweep air in and out my own dancing body. I got good eyes. I can see. A good peace down the road, clear to God, murmuring in me. My head is the burning bush. What I hold in my hand is the promised land. I set my people free in me. And we walk without wandering, like people named after mere plants, because we are a tree and high-stepping roots cakewalking in this promised place. Where I go is where I am now. Don't mess with me. You hurt yourself. In the middle of my stride now, I am walking. Yes, indeed, I am walking through my own house. I am walking, yes, indeed, on my own piece of road, toting my own load and yours and mine. I tell you, I feel fine and clear this morning, even when it's night and a full moon with my thumbprint on it. Everything is clamorous and quiet. I am the only one here. And we don't break. No, indeed. Come hell and high water, we don't break for nothing. Thank you. Yesterday, on Facebook and Instagram, Parnesia put a post. I have a feeling that my co-host, Avery R. Young, is going to show out tomorrow. I got one more. <laughs> Give it up for Ariel Watson, y'all. The next poet up is Dr. Tara Betts. Give it up for Tara Betts, you all. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'll be brief. I thought of several words to describe Ms. Jackson, powerful, prolific, funny, mischievous, if you catch her in the right moment. <laughs> but um, I wrote a short poem, and then I'm going to get into her poem, American Justice, which is equally amazing as many of the poems in her books. This is a new poem, Cornerstone Woman. Instead of talk about the one refused, we celebrate you, Cornerstone Woman, a walking library, a syncopated thump, shaking the terrarium of your ribs, calling us to drums and blues like a slow drag on a checkerboard floor on a payday Friday night. Miss Angela, you are here, clear as a lighthouse cutting sheets of rain, reflecting a blade of light into the night that would swallow us, hide us away and say there is no room for us. You have filled the pages with staccato anger, rippling joy, myths swept under the west, and our blue-black turned holy songs. You gave us all this language, and you still swing in, a rumble in a jungle of words, and you knock us back into next week, or at least knowing, understanding, that we have so much work to do, so much to learn, so much to write. And this is her poem, American Justice, from, it seems like a mighty long time. American Justice. No one has told you that it hurts to be bound and gagged like Bobby Seale in the courtroom of the once Chicago 8, then Chicago 7. And I am very much a woman. I sing because I am not free. I sing because I hurt to be bound so long you have forgotten who I am and who I used to be and what I stand for. I ask you, are you surprised what you see in a lopsided land? I couldn't say. 
I may be 26, but I'm an old woman in disguise, Aretha said. Then, and she was right, so I'm singing to you from the heart till the door closes on me and a dream of a man encased in a bubble, a bubble above my head like lines of conversation in a comic strip. I ask you, are you surprised by what you see in a lopsided land? I will sing for you as when I was 25, a thousand bond years ago. There's a reason why Aretha drives her voice like a Cadillac, a pink Cadillac with the top down, close your eyes. See a star over a dusty city. Outlines of lives filled in smoke, concrete, and you cruise through decades and feel unbound with the top down. There's a history hidden in Aretha's voice. The quick river we crossed, the turbulence in the air, the freedom riders riding, the fire next time, out of a south of children hungry, dancing before a shotgun shack, singing, look in my eyes. What you see, surprise, surprise, you just like me. I see more than that in all shades, but I couldn't say that's how they paid me for speaking up. And my voice flew away from me on its own and then came back wiser to me. I remembered how Nat Turner lay down in a field and saw visions as a gift from God alone, and I knew what love was and is and loss going down slowly. Grace is a gift I can never see. It comes to us threaded through the eye of a needle. I am a poor woman. I am a queen of my soul. I sing because God made me, and I sing because I am not free. Applause travels like rain and may pass over me, but my song comes back home to sit on my chest after I pour it on you like sunshine or sorrow you already know traveling like mercies to console you. I can put it on you till you start to mumble in your troubles. I surprised to see what you see in a lopsided land when I sing like an old woman with a flowing spring in her voice, a healing touch. I know you'll understand when you take my trembling, trembling hand and it is still. Thank you. This is the part of the show that I'm going to bid you all adieu. And because uh, we're coming into the second half of this celebration. Um, but what would this celebration be without having someone here who you've known um, for a long time? And it's our honor and deepest pleasure to introduce to you all Dr. Haki Maabuti. Give it up for Dr. Haki, y'all. We published her first book. We only got two copies left, so they wouldn't let me take an original copy out the press. So I just made a copy, Voodoo, Love, Magic. I think it was 74. All right. And I think we published her latest book. She has so many. It's a novella, Miracle and the Fellas. Right. There has not been a day of many weeks that I've not thought about Angela Jackson. This is my latest book, Taught by Women. And on the back cover, you got all these names, about 200 names, OK? Angela Jackson. This came out in 2020. All right. So I just want to be very clear that she is family, and that I love her. My wife does, and the only reason she's not here is because she's babysitting with our grandchildren. And for those of you who do not know me, I'm knocking the hell out of 80. <laughs> and so it's, uh, it's more than a pleasure to be here. And I'm supposed to be here. I wrote a poem for Angela. But before I read the poem, 
In our tradition, we always bring gifts. And I've been thinking about this for a long time, ever since she received this great honor from this state we've been a part of for most of, I mean, most of my life and all of her life, I'd imagine. And since Gwendolyn Brooks was my cultural mother and she was a mother for Angela also, in terms of the families that she had, I thought for a long time, what can I give Angela Jackson for this special honor that she's received? and so deserved, okay? Gwendolyn Brooks was given a stamp. That's the stamp that Gwendolyn Brooks, Robert Hayden, and about 80 other poets, E. e. Cummings, and others are here. That's the stamp. But this is the stamp also of the first day issue, February 2002, of Langston Hughes. I and Sonia Sanchez were there for the program, and this is the program, and I signed it also. So this is my gift to our dear sister, Angela. So I'm here also representing Hold W. Fuller. And Gwendolyn Brooks. And I just want to thank again the Chicago Humanities Festival and Panisha Jones and Northwestern University Press for doing what needed to be done. Third World Press will have a new website out in about two weeks. And uh, we're featuring a whole page of Angela Jackson. This poem is titled Angela, Poem Maker in Illinois for a New Decade, 2021. You have this new state name and home office laureate. Yet, there's always a yet, as in we knew you early in the 60s of the last century, before poetry became your signature, language, and soulful utterances. Your hand-printed songs navigated the hard hideouts on the south side of a windy city that gave us breath on East 35th Street and then deliberately and desperately stole it away and murderously baptized us as crazy Negroes. Culture killers momentarily disrupted your sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, and memory while keeping you in the black zip code of outcast lives until until Mama Angeline J, Baba George Sunni Man J, Grandmama Elsie, L. L. Hughes, G. Brooks, R. Hayden, S. A. Brown, H. W. Fuller, Abada, M. G. Burroughs, P. Coran, I. B. Wells, White Liverman. S. B. Burns, J. Ward, D. Levitoff, J. Donaldson, Northwestern, Obasi, E. T. A. 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 C. M. Tumbleweed, Muntu, Black Arts Movement, Festac, Kennedy King, poets, writers, and fighting artists of world cultures, including Africa's Sankofa, surrounded you with warded memories up south time travels, weekly beat ups and beat downs, laughter, and love's confrontations all demanding 
your traditional name. I, Angela, Angolan, American, against my will, before there was America, Angela, still stepping out of a ship into captivity. Yes, enslaved us into a fourth century hurricane of Jim and Jane Crow kill storms, of which most blacks are unaware. Yet for over 50 years, I've witnessed your war, love, kindness, and vision voices, your thunder-like delivery of poems and possibilities, your punching white air to liberate black breath, your volcanic embrace of yeses to knowledge, poetics, writing, and young ears, for ever sharing a learned life of a sign language of love with an unmistakable and definitive not for sale sign on your lips, eyes, smiles, poems, and tomorrow. Thank you. So one thing I want to do before I start my whole thing is the first thing I want to do is thank Allison Cuddy and Avery R. Young because they have been pretty much the saving grace of putting these events during the Humanities Festival. Avery being just who Avery is. You already know. Yes? Just being in this space. But one thing I want to do before we, I get into my whole spill because I'm the second part of the MC is to welcome Haki back because he wants to present Angela with something. Haki? One of the great portraits of Langston Hughes and the poets of, who basically have stamps now. We're gonna work very hard, Angela, to get you and Haki a stamp. We're gonna try. So you wanna hold this up? This is something he had made for you, and this is a gift that you will go home with. So that's his last parting words that he wants to present you with, okay? Okay, let's get rowdy again, yes? So here's the thing. I have been working in publishing for almost half of my life. I'm 41 years old. I started working in publishing when I was 21. I was an intern at the Row Press with Haki Matabudi. He was my fiction professor. And so anything that I knew about publishing had to deal with black people. So by the time I moved to Northwestern University Press, I was like, huh. We're all the black people. <laughs> but I started off as a marketing assistant. The first book I had to work on was Angela Jackson and her work. The first author event I was supposed to be at was Angela Jackson. And so for the last 18 years, I've moved from marketing assistant to now I am the director of the press. I can't tell you what this means to me, to come full circle in so many things. Angela has been one of the most familiar faces I've seen in publishing, in art, and in life. You are getting all your flowers and your blessings. It's long overdue. The same thing happened with Gwendolyn Brooks. Let's be honest about this. The same thing happens with a lot of women who look like you. Let's be honest about that. 
But I stand as a woman who has reached a point in my life where I want you to have the flowers and I want all the young women that come after you, the young black women that come after you, to get their flowers now, not later. But here we are. The poem that saved my life in the moment that I was in was a poem from her collection, And All These Roads Be Luminous. It was so simple, and it was so beautiful, and it made all the difference of how we look at each other. And I think I wanted to read this poem especially because of all that we've gone through. It's the simple things. You don't need to necessarily go out. We've learned that. We've had to make do and survive inside, inside our shells. And this poem, this poem actually speaks to everything that has happened before, everything that happens now, and everything that happens going forward. The mother behaves like a young woman with a lover when Nat King Cole comes on the box. She takes off her re-run over shoes. She removes her re-run stockings. She unzips her re-hem skirt. She parts with her polyester blouse. She lies down on the sagging couch. Husband and children hide in the living room dark. The television glow slides over her slip like moonlight. Nat King Cole's glossed hair glistens like onyx. His voice shines in her eyes. She closes them. His song ends on the edges of her Mona Lisa smile. Midnight sighs over the silence of sleeping children. She sleeps on and on the sagging couch until husband invites her to his bed. His voice Newly tender, newly televised. So I start the introduction with our next poet, Onyx Appleberry. Please welcome. Sorrow talked eye to eye, forgiven is no mere burden. The one who sings is no mere beast. The one who slips the harness of the whore stands alive as earth. Today, I can watch the wind and it is blue smoke. I shake myself inside my dress, consider rain and choose shine. I was walking down Mississippi River Street and a ghost stopped me. No one could see it but me, standing in the middle of the sidewalk, smiling at a haint with his hat in his hand instead of his head when he can tote that too. When one mule die, the rest nay cry till the wagon take the dead thing away. Mississippi River Street, rampant with noise, radiant, won't hold still. But I have walked on blue black water, Watch the dead rise before the wagon even came. Everywhere I see mules, open mouths sing blues, then be human, then beyond. Funerals, weddings, baptisms. I take off my skin and hang it up like a soaked quilt to dry the tears and sweat from feeling. I stand naked before church, holding Dr. Watts closer than my sagging girlish breasts. My soul wears no clothes when she sings. It is all B 
being in love with more than one man who is one whole man you can look into his eyes without blinking. Where would I go to hide? Dr. Watts, standing with my skin hooked on his finger, and I am next to him, solid and living the song with no words that every born-again mule knew in death and in life before birth, now hums true again, hot in the chest and throat, breaking natural out the mouth like breathing. Where would I go to hide? Sit down, rock my soul like my baby, and Dr. Watts climb in my lap and moan for the milk no mother can buy or borrow, only make in the hearts of her eyes, in the lines of her palms. And where would I find lines with no skin? Where would I go to hide? I tell you, I am living now. Like in Mississippi, grandmama's bedroom sitting on the right, sitting on the high bed, you could break your neck leaving. Cousin Chubby said fried fish, greens, and cornbread was good eating. I am good living. Blue smoke watching, naked, haint smiling, entertaining Dr. Watts, dreaming of a man with a white liver who can't kill me, who love mulish women, hainted ones. I am the sainted one, naked with no sense of memory, but good like God rocking hums in my lap and looking for no hiding place, even if wind be blue smoke hurricane and I make red milk in the hearts of my eyes and reach out my lifelines to a hopeless haint, I can stand myself. Naked now, where would I want to go to hide from this funeral, wedding, death, and birth baptism? the sliding tears washing my soul cleaner than Dr. Watts' whistle, or the look in a sweating man's eyes when he looking at a perfect, brutal son, killing him with living, while he lick his lips and dream of water, then put his shoulder behind a woman, guiding him while he dig in and groove the earth to the quick, deep, endless quick. Where would I go? Where would I go to hide this yes crying, love yielding beyond flesh yet subsumed by sweat? Where would I go? Naked so, following blues and Dr. Watts like a double seeing shadow, standing before you with only blue smoke between us, humming yes and yes and yes, subsumed by sweat and yielding beyond mere flesh. Thank you. Thank you, Onyx. So the next poet is not just a poet, is an artist. There's very few people that actually can read the mind of a poet. Let me tell you, we're a mixed bag, OK? But this poet and this artist has been one of our saving grace for black writers in terms of when we have the idea and to make a book happen, usually you will see her visual work on our books, on the cover of our books. But she's also, in addition, an incredible and brilliant poet. Ladies and gentlemen, Krista Franklin. Um, I just want to say one, um, a couple little things. You know, listen, Ms. Jackson just had me back there in tears, OK? Um, I just want to say thank you to Ms. Jackson, first of all, just for her unyielding um, dedication to the craft of poetry and also for her deep and unabiding love of us. So I just want to honor her because, you know, if it was not for her, I wouldn't be here. Coco, for Miss Coco Taylor. Hearing suffer when you live loud, but you can feel like you blind but see everything but the smokiest light. Even the wig red back on my head be alive and talking back when I bite lightning and make a bow. Ain't no accidents. Not even the one knock pops in me and the men over the side of the winding road, it was raining. And the road was alive, hanging over death like a woman out a window hollering. 
on Maxwell Street. Or like we call it Jewtown, when everybody was on the outside near the good stank of polar sausage and onions, sweating and crying grease, you like to find a tailor in the back room, making them suits with big shoulders and a shine if you wanted to do like a good man would in some heat. Outside, it would have been a blind man standing on the corner, but he still see his own skin and use a spoon to push the lightning through the tear in his guts. Wouldn't no thimble do for him. Wouldn't no thimble suit him. There are different kinds of naked. If you can understand what it makes, what makes it funny is, I get up in the morning in real life and cook and clean house like any woman, but then before morning, I let the growl out the pocket of my mouth and she come out in a holler, be naked and long-legged, split the smoke room, swoop and fly up in somebody's eye. Used to be a time when a woman didn't go around making such suits for anybody to wear. She just stay home and sew. But I take the spool and go upside a man's head, he know he been struck by lightning. He start to moan and cry, asking for a miracle. Please hit me again, but I can't hear from the stage of Highway 61. Not the way I'm working, with no clothes on but sweat and the truth in a spangled costume, trying to make this suit fit everybody's misery and be walking too. And ooh, in the corner, somebody could have been done shot shame and nobody knows she was missing till the morning after my voice be done wore off, lightning be shook out they wounds and they and the growl be back in my pocket when I ask my husband Pops what he want for breakfast and if he needs some socks or something, need a needle. Thank you. How we doing? Woo woo, Saturday, come on y'all. I'm gonna try to keep it together, okay? Angela Jackson, Gwendolyn Brooks, Carolyn Rogers, Haki Marabuti, Kelly Norman Ellis. These people taught me that I could have the whole world. And they taught all of us they were artists in some of the most volatile times in our humanity. Here we are once again. Yes? The one thing I want to make clear, it has actually nothing to do with race. We started that. That's not a human thing. That's us being extra. It's up to us to actually do what we do going forward. But it's also up to us to remember so many people who laid the groundwork of what we do. We cannot move forward unless we make clear how much was important that came before us and what is still happening. The one story I tell now, as an editor at a publisher, there was one day where I spoke to, I decided to spend the whole day speaking to authors, just authors, just get my authors all straight, because you know, they're ready, they're freaking out about their manuscript and everything, right? And I realized in one day, I talked to five authors. The oldest was 101. The youngest was 24, and everybody in between. I literally had to speak five different languages. We have never had this many humans, artists, cultural workers in our humanity. So show some respect, not just for the 101-year-old, but for the 24-year-old. They're going to keep you living alive, your history. And this is why it means so much to me. Angela was the first black woman I read. 
And I'm grateful that she's the black woman, she's the artist, she is the person, she's the human we honor today. Ladies and gentlemen, Angela Jackson. You look lovely. Thank you so much. So do you. <laughs> so here we are. You are poet laureate of the Uni United States, Illinois. You know, <laughs> we do. Because there's so many. And every time I see this, I'm like, OK, all right, we got to get this straight. But let me ask you something. What does that mean? To you it's a lot of work it's a it's a lot of work to represent the people of Illinois and poetry at the same time mm -hmm. it's a lot of work to create ways in which to make people excited about poetry and to share more poetry and to get them to read poetry but also to create their own poetry that uh, embodies their lives. Mm -hmm. So um, the program that I received funding from the Academy of American Poets for, for was to create four ambassadors of poetry, younger poets in their 20s who would do residencies in schools, community centers, uh, veterans centers, senior citizen centers, rehab centers, prisons and libraries around the state. Unfortunately, the, the drawback that I had in creating my four, first group of poets was I only had one from downstate. But I do have a diverse group in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. uh, one Latinx young man, one black woman and one black man, and uh, a white woman in the Carbondale area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can't help but to ask this question, and I went back and forth mm -hmm. if I wanted to ask this question. I couldn't help if I wanted to ask this question. Gwendolyn Brooks became, she won the Pulitzer. Her lights were turned off. That's the story. Yeah. She won the Pulitzer Prize in the dark. Yes, yeah, she was the first black person to win a Pulitzer of any kind. Yes. Yes. And you being appointed to the Illinois Poet Laureate during a pandemic, somehow this seems like a theme to me. It somehow seems like what? A theme. Oh. That what does it mean to become this in this moment right now? To become the? The Poet Laureate of Illinois during the pandemic. During the pandemic? Yes. You have to work harder, you know, you have to 
create avenues of one thing we have decided uh, I haven't sent the ambassadors out yet, but I'm to meet with them within the next week, and we've decided to tell them if they have to, they'll meet with people virtually. Hmm. They'll just have to do virtual readings if they cannot do person to person. Hmm. And, and I have been doing, as Poet Laureate, virtual readings. Mm -hmm. But I did do, recently, I did two in-person readings, one okay. downstate and one uh, in Rockford, yeah. Okay, so the last question I have, because we want you to read. We all showed up to like, you know, give you your flowers, but you gotta read, that's part of the deal. <laughs> It's how you get paid. You read. Sounds good to me. But the last question I have for you is, how are you doing in all of this? How, how are do, you doing? How do I be How are you doing in how all am I of doing? this? I have help. I have a wonderful young ad administrative manager, I call her, named Laura Kenton. And she helps me do keep track of money and, and, uh, and do the, the typing. I also have an additional uh, editor, uh, Joanna Johnson, and they do a lot of the hard work for me, the, the necessary, necessary work. I, I select the poems to use in the, in the residencies, but they have to type them to disseminate to the ambassadors. So yeah. that's not really the question I'm asking. What? Because first of all, we have a new book coming out from you, yeah, More I Than do. Meat and Raymond. And I am so excited about More Than Meat and Raymond. I cannot tell you how excited I am. But that wasn't my question. Okay. My question is, how are you, Angela Jackson, doing? How am I doing? Yes, how are you? Not the poet, not the artist, you, a human being. How are you doing in this moment? I'm doing better. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to making a way out of no way that it's hard to say. I just do what I have to do in order to survive. So when my mother was alive, she passed in Christmas of 2015. And when she was alive, my mother was the center of my life. And there would be days that were so bad that I would not want to get out of bed but then I'd say, you have to get up because you have to fix mama's breakfast and get her situated, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it would be pleasant because we'd eat our cream of wheat and applesauce and coffee <laughs> and listen to the radio and it would be better. Uh, and then, of course, I would go and teach my classes at Kennedy King, and the students were a pleasure then. When the students became not a pleasure, my last class there, and it was also COVID, it was time for me to retire, and I did. <laughs> uh, so. Well, I thank you for waking up every day and making your breakfast. Making your breakfast. You make, you make your breakfast every day. So here we are. Yes. Let's do this. Dap, let me give it a little. Just before she reads, I got to do this, please. This is my life right now. I love you. Love you too. <laughs>
So it's all you. It now is now should, for you to read. Now I could I should read now? Yes. Okay. I am going to read, and this may be a telling poem that my oldest brother, George, asked me to read. And it's a poem that captures the 5527 television tribe because we lived at 55th and Wentworth. And it's what we did in the late 50s, early 60s on Saturday nights. And of course also in the late 50s, early 60s, there were a slew of movies that reflected the atomic age. And that was where animals became monsters. And that was also the time of the beginning of the civil rights movement where the status quo was upset. So all of that was reflected in these movies. And this one is based upon the movie, The Spider. And the whole plot of the movie is in the poem. <laughs> Rock and roll monster, down home blues goes Hollywood. And this is for my brother George, who's here. She was sitting in her black juke cave, listening to blues, eating bats, and getting fat when the light bread people came. She ate the first man for a snack. Then the daughter came with yellow celery down her back and a boyfriend, and pretty soon a hippie blue spider can't win. They took her in put her on drugs and propped her in a museum, took her blues away, and she slept numb out of it, roped in and stupid, captured, came alive in a museum in 1957. Some white kids were playing rock and roll before the mashed potatoes loud enough to wake the dead or dopey woke the rock and roll in her pitch bush body. She got up on the wrong side of no bed, hair standing all over her head, catching radio waves, the voice of God, she thought it was. She just wanted to put her hand on the music box and be saved. Sounded like somebody she knew from home, but no indeed, they snatched the bumpy tune and fled, scattered down Main Street with her musical treat. All she longed for was a good meal after a long sleep. Evil gal blues under her swampy lid crashed a fine unshaved leg through teeny tiny whitey trim window like a black whip snapping law and order. Watch. The pastel people pee and flee, stalk high-heeled blondes with screaming Brussels sprouts in their arms, all looking good enough to eat, but rescued in the nick of time. Monster want to rock and roll over in her own bed, back in the juke joint cave. She moonwalk her regal walk on home, eight. Sheriff intruder at her leisure, his whole body hors d'oeuvres, his skeleton left an empty, lazy Susan. She just want to pick her teeth, snap her fingers, drink a Bloody Mary, and listen to some down-home blues loud. She want to lay around with her hair wild and legs unstyled, smell her own funk and dream the rest of her cave black night, got instead a mouth full of dynamite. Ain't that cold-blooded? <laughs> and
And there the spider was, minding her own business. <laughs> Why they want to mess with her? <laughs> and that's from Dark Legs and Silk Kisses. That came out in 93. I'm going to read two of my favorite poems from More Than Meat and Raiment. The cover is by Krista Franklin. I'm very happy with the cover. Yeah, that's beautiful. Summer and the City, Chicago then in memory of Robert Hayden and his memory. Summer nights cool came down, blotting heat like a kiss for colored children. Heat surged as we danced jagged up and down the street, played hide and seek. Last night, night before, 24 robbers at my door. I got up, let them in. Hit him in the head with a rolling pin. Oh, here among the leaves of church hedges, we smelled something slow and splendid in our sweat. Our fathers, we knew, worked good jobs that required muscle. Our mothers, in day work, used elbow grease and unwritten receipts for smothered chicken and gravy caused white women to envy and delight. Outside, mothers waited for aid checks and the long gone man. Large women on folding chairs ate chunks of Argo starch. Lean days, sugar sandwiches, ketchup or mayonnaise, missing meat, a vague notion, love, manna. Twilight blessed the blocks, poured from a dark man's mouth like a spout of Joe Lewis milk, our champion toast, heralding the greatest arrival, however long the getting there. Slow, rocking grandmothers spit out words into small cans held in their hands. Their eyes trained on us from deep south porches we never left behind, never left us, even after exodus. Mouths wide open, we drank the evening's pleasure. Men, women who loved us more than what we could have known. We were their quick, flashing hope treasures, the memory of us, their milk, their honey. There's nothing like being loved when you're a child and knowing that you are loved. It carries over into your adulthood and saves you a lot of trouble. Finally, this is also the last poem in the book, More Than Meat and Raymond. For our people, homage to Margaret Walker, for my people, 1942. I was lucky enough to see Margaret Walker read her own poem in the classroom at Northwestern when I was a student. She was my Afro-American literature teacher. For our people everywhere, singing their gospels and their rap, their blues, R&B, and their jazz, their soul, and their neo-soul, all oh, great black music, scuffling, scrimping, struggling to get by.
for our people working as wage slaves in collars blue, white, and pink, doing the best they can with what they have, hoping it will not be taken away with a pink slip, a sudden slip from a parapet on cement into disability or welfare or not, hustling to keep from being crushed on the unemployment line. For our people, for the way of years sipping summer from a tall glass of ice water, buttermilk and cornbread out of a mayonnaise jar, years testing watermelon, cutting a plug of sweetness, knocking on the round or oblong to listen to the taste. For the excellence of young boys running like they stole something, but only owing themselves and the strength in their legs, and girls who could keep up before breasts held them back. For our people and red Kool-Aid days for smothered chicken and our cries smothered in a world that did not adore us, but ignored us or worse, and ran us back on the other side of the viaduct where we belong, not in the wild world we could conquer or excel in, given the gates opening and tools for redress. For our people everywhere, growing gardens on vacant lots, training roses and black-eyed Susans and perennials in front yards, raking leaves and shoveling snow, scooping dew and picking up litter, washing and ironing out the wrinkles of everyday existence for our people running with nowhere to go, watching television and movies, looking for ourselves, searching books and the nooks and crannies of history for a glimpse of what was waylaid and what is to be in barber shops and beauty parlors and ice cream parlors and the stone faces in funeral parlors, picking up children from school, from daycare, taking them to football, soccer, baseball, tennis, basketball, volleyball, having a ball at family reunions on Saturday nights. For our people who came in chains, tortured over turbulent waves, broken hearted and broken tongue and broken magic, broken bloodlines, strangled and whipped, distraught and driven to the edge of the mind and beyond for our people leaping to the sea, feeding sharks and myths and cautionary tales, surviving the journey to reach auction blocks, a purient pedestal for deposed queens and chieftains, villagers humiliated, abused, raped, and riddled with misery into exquisite survivals, changing vocabulary and clothes, changing into sleek panthers and superheroes, making the world safe for demonstrations of protest and affection, all beauty and love, scapegoated, pilloried, denied the excellence we bring. For our people grasping for gadgets and genuflecting to electric celebrity, worshiping trinkets and noisome symbols that blink and itch the eyes, gaming and gambling and laughing to keep from crying and crying, laughing, cracking up and falling out, drinking suicide and spilling milk and blood, gunned down under lampposts in playgrounds, bloodied in drive-bys, in alleys, in living rooms, in bed, sleeping. For our people, bludgeoned by police and each other, killed by presumptuous watchers, taxed for black and driving while black, shot in the back, falsely convicted, sentenced to dwell alone and want to be redeemed, incarcerated in stone, tracked in department stores, harassed, stalked in malls, and all the places people spend and sell. Our people selling loose squares, oils, socks, and peanuts, on the corners of our desperate longing for hair, for nails, for body graffiti, 
for our people in the casinos scheming in pennies from heaven with one-armed pirates dreaming in die and cards and dealers dreaming numbers and playing them till they hit for our people drowning in spirits burning throats and pockets losing it all spoiling livers lungs and kidneys hearts with too much each of us addicted to drugs of fashion to ancient hurt choosing crabs in a barrel or lifting as we climb each one teach one for our people who do not belong to me but to all of us for we belong to each other must hold each other in heart and mind for our people in the citadels of learning and the one room schoolhouse in the storefronts of funeral parlor fans and the cathedrals of painted windows and arched ceilings that lend towards sky. For our people in the baptismal pool in white robes on the edge of the river, for our people chanting and praying and hoping for a sweeter brew to sip and savor. Let a new earth arise, let justice pour like trembling rain, and mercy prevail as plentiful fields. Let our strength be matched by vulnerable honesty of heart. May resilience be our guide, for we will stumble and then will rise, more able having fallen, more beautiful having met each other along the way as we lifted each other up hero people who go out of their way for love and stay on the way of goodness. Let our people be the people who remember and believe that love is all our portions, all our currencies, and all our one. Each of us, injured or exalted, betrayer or betrayed, muted and declamatory, all one, each of us, all of us, each a private star beloved in the universe, each of us creature of burdens and singing angel merged as one, alive and moving upward, holding on and lifting this earth, our house, precious and precarious, and God be our witness between this gravity and this grace. Hold tight and fly. Oh my God. <laughs> Jilla Jackson. There you go. So, this is one for your left hand. <laughs> this oh. is one for your right. <laughs> yeah, Holy tamale. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, thank you. I want to say thank oh. you. This has been a time and a moment for all of us. I hope this was something that you can hold forward as we move about. We don't know what's gonna happen between now and the next couple of months. But at the same time, we're still here, right? right. Still and here. Angela Jackson is here and showed out. Avery Young <laughs> is here and showed out. Harisa Jones, he has showed out. You have no idea how much we love you and I think from every way, shape, and form. Thank you so much. Gwendolyn Brooks is like, yeah, she did that. She shut it down. <laughs> I dreamed she gave me a hug one day. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause. Thank you all for taking Thank the time and the space to be here. We love you. Love you. Love you.